So what this module does is it creates the different tones that we're going to hear in the sequencer. Each of these three banks of switches and knobs is one of the three tone generators. So basically each one can just produce a different pitch depending on where you set this knob. And if you flip one of these switches, it makes it so the second knob will also modify the tone. This second module is almost a siren. Um, you can set the tone of two different pitches. and it will switch back and forth with them at a speed you can control with this knob. So you can get kind of crazy, crazy noise effects by turning this up very fast. This is the sequencer itself, and each of these 16 flashing LEDs represents uh, one beat in a measure. Uh, those of you who are musically inclined will recognize them as 16th notes. And you can change how fast it steps from one beat to another by changing the um, tempo with these two knobs. This is the coarse control and the fine control. Up to, you know, ridiculously fast. And down to a pretty slow tempo. And so, with with uh, the tone generator I showed you before, I've got three different tones set up, and you can um, tell it which beats to play them on. So now I'm going to set it up so it'll play the lowest note on beats one, two, three, and four. And so how you control what tone it plays is by flipping these, these banks of switches up and down. Um, if you have just one switch up, it'll do the bottom note. If you have the other one up, it'll do the second one. And the third, both of the switches up will produce the third tone. So now it's adding the third tone on the back beat. And another option you have with the synthesizer, or the sequencer. Another option you have with the sequencer is to change how uh, short each note is. If you flip the switch up, it engages these controls, which let you make it more percussive. Down to really, really percussive. You almost can't even hear the pitches anymore. Another feature of the sequencer is, as it's going along to each of the 16 steps in the measure, it's also sending a pulse or a signal to each of these 16 screws in sequence. And what that allows you to do is trigger things externally from it that in, in time. Like we have this little box we made here that plays Winnie the Pooh sounds from um, a toy. It's not the most uh, musical thing in the world, but it'll, be, it'll work for the demonstration. And so by hooking it up to the sequencer, we can um, make, make it play sound effects in time with the beat we've programmed in. So if I want to help to make this first sound effect on beat one, I can attach it to the first screw. As it's functioning, the sequencer produces a signal called a clock pulse, which is the part of the circuit that tells it when to move to the next note. You can send that externally to other devices to make them play in time with it. Like you could... Well, this keyboard is just a normal keyboard I modified a little. So it just plays notes normally. But if you hook it up to the sequencer, it'll play in time with the 16th note pulse.
uh, this is inside of the sequencer, just so you can see. It's uh, significantly more complicated than the first one. And it's kind of a rat's nest of wires. So if we ever build, if I ever build another thing like this, I'll probably try to get my hands on some of those ribbon wires I use inside of computers so I can consolidate some of these things to make it less messy.